Differential equations can be used to model a whole load of different scenarios. Now, if you considered a weight that was attached to a spring, okay, and you pulled the weight down slightly, what would you expect to happen? Well, you would probably be thinking that in pulling it downwards, it would spring back upwards, not to its immediately to its original position, but back upwards, and then would keep going like that. Okay. Now you would expect that to wear off, and it would get back to where it started. Okay. But if we looked at a very simple model, it might just keep on doing that forever and ever. Likewise, you could look at a pendulum. So if you had a pendulum that you then moved to the side, okay, what would you expect to happen? You would expect it to start swinging backwards and forwards, okay? And realistically, you would expect that to die down and go back to its original position eventually, okay? In an ideal world, it might keep on going forever and ever and ever. You know it's not going to happen, that's going to happen. You know that's not going to happen, but uh, in, you know, if you did that in a room, you wouldn't expect that to happen, okay? But uh, we could look at a simple model that deals with that. Or you could look at the tides, okay? You could look at uh, the height of a tide um, and see that. And in all of these cases, if you consider it, as the distance that it's being moved, okay, and the distance is moving side by side or up and down or with the tides, the height of the tide, all of these are looking like a sine curve or a cosine curve, but we can generalize it to a sine curve, okay, a translated sine curve. So all of these situations we refer to as simple harmonic motion. And for simple harmonic motion, we can consider a standard second-order differential equation that looks like this. d2x by dt squared. So if x is your distance and t is time, okay, uh, well, x is displacement rather, and t is time, then what we're looking at here is your acceleration. And this is going to be equal to negative omega squared times x. Now, this is the standard form of a simple harmonic motion, the differential equation that governs that. Now, it's not immediately obvious as to where, where does the sine come into this? Um, where does the sine curve come into this? Where does this really come from? Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to solve this second order differential equation, okay? And you will see where it's coming from through that. So the first thing that I would do is I would reorder this. So we have d2x by dt squared plus omega squared x is equal to zero. Then I would look at the auxiliary equation. And that would be m squared plus omega squared is equal to zero. So that means that m would be equal to plus or minus omega times i. Now if that's the case, then the general solution to my differential equation would be x is equal to some constant c1 times cosine of omega t, okay, because we're using t here, let's pop it in a bracket, plus c2 sine of omega t. Now, of course, usually we'd have e to the power of something x, but there is no real part here, the real part is zero, okay, so that would just be one. So this is my general solution. Now, in A-level maths, you met a way of rewriting this into an equivalent form using the compound angle formulae. Now, another name for that form 
is harmonic form. And that is directly linking in with what we're doing here. So, I would like to be able to write this in the form of A times sine of omega t plus epsilon. Okay, so this is like um, where you had r sine theta plus or minus alpha. Okay, it's exactly the same process as doing that. So using the compound angle formulae, I'm able to write this as A times sine of omega t cosine epsilon plus cosine of omega t sine of epsilon. So A cosine epsilon sine of omega t plus a sine of epsilon cosine of omega t. So comparing what we've got, the c1 has got to be equal to the a sine epsilon. And the c2 has got to be equal to the a cosine epsilon. Now, if you were to draw a right angle triangle for this, where your angle is epsilon, then sine of epsilon is C1 over A, so that's C1, that's A, and cosine of epsilon is C2 over A, so that's C2, the adjacent side. So therefore, we have A is equal to the square root of c1 squared plus c2 squared and tan of epsilon is equal to c1 over c2. So we can write this as a sine of omega t plus epsilon where a is that and tan of epsilon is that. OK, right, now that we've got to that stage, a few observations to make. Firstly, this will be a sine curve, OK, where the maximum value would be at A. So this is going to be x is equal to A. And the minimum value will be x is equal to minus a. So the displacement is going from a to minus a. So you can see that that's like the high tide and low tide, for example. Or uh, the furthest the pendulum gets over to the left, and the furthest the pe pendulum gets over to the right. Okay, or the height of my weight on the spring. Epsilon is referred to as the phase shift. Now, what we mean by that is essentially it is what the curve is translated by, left or right, depending on the situation. And the other thing to take note of is this function's period. The fact that it is periodic, of course, but its period would be, well, sine has a period of 2 pi, and it is being stretched parallel to the t-axis by factor 1 over omega, or omega, rather. And so that'd be 2 pi over omega would be your period. So this is where simple harmonic motion is coming from. The fact that this second order differential equation has this as its general solution. 
Okay, the fact that this describes many different oscillating situations. And so that is where this is coming from, where that second order differential equation comes from. Okay, and we're going to see how this works in different scenarios.